that makes I, I wish we had a microphone on this we'll have to come back and do something with you sometime mark and do something so that you can actually hear the difference but all of a sudden the noise of the room all the atmosphere of the people around us has just disappeared and there's just a sort of slight sort of hiss now so that makes a huge difference doesn't it for yeah. when you're flying along in your your general tiredness as well i imagine yeah the fatigue all that stuff is uh much gone when you have a good active noise system yeah so basically if you're looking to buy a headset you want to do what what's your top tip so to speak well the first tip i'd say is to try them all on find out which one is comfortable yep so no matter how well it performs if it's not comfortable for you then you're not going to enjoy wearing it yep uh, then see uh, there is difference in, in how, how quiet they are yeah uh, most of most manufacturers in, or in, in retailers will have something to generate noise that you can try so you can the see. active noise reduction out. so try it out feel the weight feel the comfort and then presumably you've got to look at your budget as well haven't you fancy that have a look at your budget yeah. but uh, I wouldn't uh, you only have one set of ears yeah I wouldn't go too inexpensive uh, you just want to protect your hearing as long as you can Mark we've got a round out thank you very much for joining us do stay here just for a second because I just want to go straight into our next piece now. We actually got a question on our website from George asking us um, about the Baron, the Beechcraft Baron. And so I was walking around, I didn't think there was one there, and all of a sudden I came across one. Let's see what I thought. Right, we got a question from one of our viewers uh, called George about the Baron. And I said on our website that we didn't actually see one here. And I've been, just been walking along and found one sitting in front of us. I'm delighted to say that I've got a chance to have a look around it now. So, look, tell me. Why the Baron Beechcraft? Why is it a good aircraft? Well, it's an all-weather airplane, certified no icing, 200 knots, and then the seating, of course. It's a six-place airplane, single pilot, and now fitted with the G1000. Its safety um, reliability is superb. Um, the, uh, all the airplanes come with pilot training through Flight Safety, which is the number one commercial trainer. Right. And, I mean... You just put all those together, it's just a safe, reliable so airplane. how good is it, in, how easy is it to learn to fly? Because a lot of people, well, what would they be coming up from typically? What sort of aircraft would someone that's moving up to a Baron would be flying? Well, a Beechcraft Bonanza, of course. <laughs> well, of course. <laughs> okay, what's more common? What's the most common sort of thing, type of aircraft? Um, you know, 172s, 182s, Bonanzas, um, and then, you know, even Cirruses. I mean, people get, they make the step to the Baron, of course, for the the safety, the second engine, and then the all-weather capability. Um, for a U.S. pilot, it's about 10 hours of training. For a European jar ops pilot, uh, it'd take you a couple months. It's very simple to learn. Once you're a pilot, to learn the multi-engine par part of it yeah. is uh, pretty simple. And then to fly the airplane, of course, if you're coming from a Bonanza, it's really easy. We just add a prop lever and uh, another throttle, yeah. and you have the same it's airplane. Really, there's a speed difference. I mean, what are you cruising along at in this? 200 knots. 200 knots. So if you're going from a 172, which, let's face it, is struggling to do about 100 knots most of the time, right. that's going to be quite a difference, isn't it? Yeah, but I mean, this airplane flies fine at 100 knots or 200 knots, so until you're comfortable with the speed, you just pull the throttle back and make yourself comfortable. Well, the one thing I did enjoy about it, we did a feature a long time back with a chap that had a, a Baron 58 and he was flying it from the back of his house and he had this um, fairly small sort of field which he was flying it from and he would take off by pointing towards this, this um, multi-million pound house and he would get it off the ground each time somehow but we flew out in one of these things and I remember it was absolutely beautiful inside so if we can, can I shut this door for a moment and then clamber up into the cockpit and it's quite a big aircraft, to tell you that straight away, as I get in here, but it is, unlike getting in some of the, the smaller LSAs, there's plenty of space in here, and uh, in fact, if Rob can actually work his way up, I think you're just about in there. Well done, Rob. Just looking up here inside. One thing I do like about it straight away on this one is just the fact you've got a bit more space. You're right. not kind of cramped in like some aircraft, are you? No, I mean, it has the big airplane feel because, you, you know, we're both pretty wide guys. We can shut this door and, I mean, we, we don't have to touch shoulders. You have the, the rest here. So it, it's, it's a, it feels like a bigger airplane as a, with the uh, conventional controls, not a side stick. I mean, it, it's a big cockpit. One thing also I notice about this is that that dashboard is very high. But can you see well? Well, on the taxi, of course, it's a little bit different. But when you think about it, once you're in flight, in cruise, the nose will actually be pointed down, yeah. and you have very good visibility all around. On the ground, we're sitting kind of tail down, nose up. In flight, level flight, you'll sit more level in the, the dash.